Good afternoon everyone, my name is Lewis, welcome back to the channel, I hope I find you all in good health. Today I'm going to be talking about three albums that I've been listening to recently, I'm going to talk about each album in turn and why I would recommend them to you. So the first album today is a 1961 release by a gentleman called Milt Jackson and the album's entitled Statements. There we go. Yeah, quite a plain cover. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Quite like it. Um, for me, at least, this album is unashamedly cool. Um, and I do believe it's an underrated album, in my humble opinion. Um, for me, this is a good example of jazz hedonism. Um, so, like, in, I think it was the last episode or two episodes ago... Um, I spoke about an album by a gentleman called Hiromasa Suzuki and the album was called Primrose and again I used the term uh, jazz hedonism to describe that album um, and I may have not entirely given you the context for it um, I just what I mean by it quite simply is a style of jazz which alludes to the finer things in life um, it's not urban landscape, it's not gritty, it's it's alluding to the finer things in life and this album does the same thing and but I think it does it slightly better than um Hiro Masa Suzuki's Primrose. Um this album exudes a noticeably quieter dignity and rationality compared to the Primrose album which I spoke about in an early episode um, it has this particular album has an intimate feel but at the, yet, at the, yet at the same time it's convivial it's inclusive um, it has a smoothness um, a less look at me type of attitude towards it um, maybe I'm just making this all up off the top of my head but that's certainly what I I thought when listening to this album then trying to compare and contrast it with Primrose which is as I said um, quite a similar footprint but I just think this one this version is executed with more as I said with more dignity um, it's a little less shouty and in your face and that's perhaps why I appreciated it a bit more um, going on from that thought um, I was thinking to myself what would somebody say like half my age make of this album and its sound because it's really easy it, superficially it's easy going it's more of a loungy sound and I'd be interested to know whether somebody in their 20s would uh, be impatient with this album want it to get going want it to be a lot faster in tempo um, and all those those descriptions um, from maybe a younger person's um, perspective are all the things that I appreciate which are not apparent on this album it's not trying to trundle through the tracks as quickly as possible it's taking its time it's considering um, each phrase and um, the compositions are well crafted they have a certain pace they have a certain you know laid backness to them but that's not to say it's lazy or anything it's just to say that this was a particular period in time this is how we viewed things it's not to say nothing was going on it's just a case of we just took our time to come up to, with conclusions maybe um, but like I said that's why I really do appreciate this particular album um, you might think to yourself well I've heard the name Milt Jackson before um, but I'm not entirely sure where um, just to give you a bit of background um, he's one of the essential members of the modern jazz quint, qu sorry modern jazz quartet so he's been about um, so he's had quite a bit of fame within that band and this is his one of his solo pieces um, so to speak very enjoyable um, the tracks that I would recommend from this album are uh, Paris Blue, Sunny Moon for Two, yes that's Sunny Moon not Honeymoon and A Thrill from the Blues 
Um, yeah, really strong tracks, I believe. Um, notables on this album are Paul Chambers on bass and Connie K does a lovely job on drums. So yeah, um, this was a particularly cheap um, album. Um, I found it in one of the bargain bins. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm super pleased. I, I think I paid probably about three pounds for it. Worth every penny. Um, I've seen versions of this on Impulse. Um, and I'm sure that they're going to be, you know, quite expensive. Um, check out those tracks. See if it's for you. If you can get a budget copy such as this, go for it. Um, if not, and, you know, your collection and your purse can withstand it, yeah, go for the Impulse version. Um, but, yes, do check it out. The second album today is a slice of Japanese jazz from 1970. And the uh, uh, artiste is called Kasuki Mine or Mine, and this is his uh, quintet. And the album is called Mine or Mine. You decide for yourself how you think it's going to be pronounced in Japanese. Um, I've been struggling over how I'm going to do it, but yeah, I'm going to probably pronounce it both ways. Um, yeah. So, is this album good? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's very good. But that's with conditions. It's not 100% in my opinion. Um, or 360 degrees of pleasure. Um, it's more like a 180 in my humble opinion. Um, truth be told, um, I've been slightly baffled by this album. Um, not because of the, the cover. Um, <laughs> which is quite abstract, it's kind of like a Salvador Dali type thing going on there, which I'm thoroughly amused by. Um, yeah, but um, why, I say, why I say baffled is because um, over several weeks of um, background repeated listening, um, I have yet to gain a real handle on what's going on on this particular album. Um, with most albums, um, I've got to the point in terms of my appreciation where I've got some sense of what's going on. This one, despite how many times I've listened to it, I've yet to really form hard conclusions about this one. And that's probably not a good thing, because that means that in terms of longevity in my collection, its place is almost guaranteed, because... I'm going to continue to revisit it and discover new things about it each time I listen to it. So it's probably not a bad thing. Um, yeah, just to repeat, um, I'd probably say I like half of this album. Um, and the, the parts that I do like, um, I absolutely adore. I, I think it's just beautiful. Um, but yeah, you might like it all. Um, I'm, yeah, for some of the pieces, I'm just I, I don't have enough patience for it, or it just just didn't click with me for whatever reasons. Um, but it's interesting that I I do have an issue with it, or there's a lack of understanding on my part, and I I find that quite challenging. Um, so it's not the compositions themselves, um, because they are well constructed and performed by the. Uh, the quintet there's no doubts about that um and i'm really uncomfortable with the idea of even thinking for a second that it's because it may be because the compositions and the execution although professionally crafted and executed lack soul i, I don't want to believe that for a second because when you actually listen to it there is something there. I, I, I have found myself many a time head nodding to to the music which is you know which is occurring. Um so I obviously enjoy it. Um but I don't want I don't really want to go as far to say that there's an absence of soul here because it just doesn't make sense. But um I would like um some of your feedback if possible. Um the tracks that I would recommend from this particular album are Dream Eyes and Isotope but yes um, please if you do happen to hear this album on one of the streaming services um, 
if you wouldn't mind can you drop me a comment in the section below just to let me know what you think about this album and perhaps be able to give me some idea of why I'm confused maybe it's just me maybe you know I'm, I'm wholly well I'm happy to accept that it could just be my interpretation and you've had a, a much smoother path of understanding this album than I have but yeah your feedback would be most appreciated because yeah I'd like to get a better handle on this particular album so yeah um uh, this one was on limited release. It's not like a limited edition or anything like that. But um, I think this, this particular album doesn't come around that often. So if you do see it and you've listened to the tracks and you do enjoy it, I'd say get it sooner rather than later. It wasn't super expensive to buy. Obviously, this is a reprint. Um, but yes, do assume because it's Japanese jazz that if you miss out on the reprint um, and you find yourself just pursuing the original it's going to be expensive but yeah something to listen to um and like i said your your feedback would be appreciated the third and final album today again i put in the category of completely underrated um and it's by a lovely lady called adele sebastian and it's from 1980 and the album's entitled Desert Fairy Princess. Yeah, that's a nice cover. Um, again, this is a repress. Um, the original pretty much had the same cover, um, slightly different color scheme. Um, I prefer this one for whatever reason. It's really nicely packaged, this one. Um, yes, for me, um, a criminally underrated album. Um, um, I think of this as essential to anyone who's inclined towards the more spiritual side of jazz. Um, I'm super glad I've got it on, in my collection. Um, I'd seen it advertised um, just from the cover alone. I wasn't necessarily that in, that excited by it. But um, once I did get to hear it, um, it was a no brainer for me. I was going to purchase it and I'm happy to have had it in my collection for some time now. Um, Miss Sebastian um, is part of or was part of the Pan-African Orchestra um, who supported Horace Tapscott on a couple of his albums so yeah there is um, good pedigree here um, sad story um, Miss Sebastian passed away before she was 30 and I believe this was her only solo work um, and it's very good um yeah and it being her uh, you know her solo piece her uh, one and only solo piece as far as i know just gives it that much more weight as far as i'm concerned but even if this was not the case um i still would say very strongly please do have a listen please consider it for your collection um because yeah i just think it's really really nice um Yes, there is um, overall a naivety to the um, compositions. Not that she's responsible for them, um, but the, the compositions which were chosen and how they were performed. Yeah, I, I do feel that there is an overall naivety to it. But don't think of this or interpret what I'm saying in the negative. Because there is a warmth. There is an empathy there is a humanity and an optimism which features on this album which just i believe sets it apart from quite a few other um jazz albums which are a bit more pessimistic this one goes the opposite route and i'm thankful for that um the tracks that i would recommend from this album are uh, i felt spring desert fairy princess and belize three good tracks there and they all happen to be on the a side so if you do um have a listen to it on one of the streaming sites they all kind of clustered together so um the notables that i would uh, point out on this album would be bobby west on piano and daoud woods on percussion yeah they give it a very nice balance um yeah good performance all around by everyone on this album um particularly miss sebastian um yeah if you see it I, I i would say just get it um 
it wasn't super expensive um those who know about it probably adore it um so i i believe you'd probably be able to find copies of this on vinyl quite easily if you do like it and you do want to add to add it to your collection it won't be super expensive so that was the final album for today um again it's been an absolute pleasure to uh talk to you about some of my musical journey recently what i've been listening to um yes uh please feel free to seek out these albums for yourself have a listen let me know what you think whether you agree or disagree particularly if you, you disagree I'd, I'd like to hear that because i don't assume that i'm right it's just my interpretation of what my feelings are so there is a subjective element in there but it's just nice to hear from other people what their feelings were so um for the moment uh thank you for sharing your time with me it's been an absolute pleasure uh please consider liking subscribing and sharing and perhaps leaving a comment down below um yes until the next episode um please look after yourselves stay safe and i will see you soon so until then take care bye bye